This is essentially about analysing graphs. The IB specifically mentions concentration, volume and mass graphs. Concentration, well you could look at the change in colour or pH to measure the different acid or alkali concentration. Volume over time, well that could be, I don't know, a, a gas being released, but don't forget to keep the pressure and temperature constant or the data won't be valid. And a change in mass over time, uh, again you're probably releasing a gas here and your reactant uh, reaction vessel is getting lighter and lighter as the gas is released. Looking at uh, the simplest of the graphs, time is always on the x-axis and let's say for the y-axis concentration, volume or, or mass. Those are the two lines we're going to be looking at almost all the time. If your data keeps getting lower and lower, like the yellow line, that could be, that could be the mass of the reaction as a gas is released. And if it increases, that could be, I don't know, the volume of the gas produced over time. Notice they level off as a reaction is completed. Continuing with our look at these graphs, let's draw another set of axes and a few curves. So let's say that's the volume of carbon dioxide released versus time in seconds. So looking at the graph, the rate of reaction, if you remember, by definition is the change in concentration of reactants over time or changing concentration of products over time. And that's analogous, in this case, to the change in volume of carbon dioxide over time. And that's going to be the slope of the graph. That's going to be a tangent on the graph. Notice at the beginning is the highest gradient, the highest slope, which means a fast rate. And that's because the reactant concentration there is at its highest. So there's going to be more collisions per unit time since the reactants are at their highest concentration. It slows down uh, there, about halfway along. And at the end, the tangent to the line shows the gradient is zero. It's flat, so there's no reaction going on. The change in the volume of carbon dioxide over time is zero. That's because there are no reactants left, or at least no limiting reactants left, when the curve flattens out. Drawing in a couple more curves. So if I've got 10 grams of carbon, uh, calcium carbonate and 100 milliliters of one molar sulfuric acid, Let's say that's the green line at 350 Kelvin. So that's the central line, if you're color blind, or watching in black and white, or listening in black and white. The line with the steepest gradient at the beginning is a faster reaction, and that's going to have the higher temperature uh, that the reaction was carried out at. And the less steep line, well, that's going to have a, a lower temperature. So what's the reason behind that? Well, don't forget, there are three parts to collision theory. For a successful reaction, they had to collide the reactants the, with the correct geometry and with energy greater than equal to activation energy. Now correct geometry is rarely if ever the answer and so as you increase the temperature there's going to be more collisions per unit time and more collisions with energy equal to or greater than activation energy. By changing the size of the chalk to powder and say big old lumps there you're just going to be changing the frequency of the collision as a higher surface area on the bigger lumps means there's going to be less successful collisions because a lot of the chalk is kind of hidden up inside the lump and the powder that's going to be faster because so much of the chalk is available for reaction since the surface area is very high. So I'm going to draw in some vertical lines as soon as the reaction's finished the gradient of the line is zero at least one of the reactants has run out and you can work out the time the reaction's finished so for the powdered reaction, powder has a very high surface area, the acid can get into every single little bit of chalk available. That's going to finish the first, let's say, I don't know, it's 60 seconds. The lumps have a bigger surface area and finally the bigger lumps, there's so much chalk trapped inside those big lumps that the acid can't get to it as fast as it can with the powder. And So you can see there's going to be some sort of progression. Now don't worry about the spacing, of these things it's just arbitrary even with concentrations of acids and temperatures it's just a kind of an arbitrary spacing we're interested in. You can also look at a change in concentration of the acids again that's going to affect how many collisions per unit time higher concentration more collisions per unit time and this final graph here this final line on the graph they like to throw a, a weird one in. Now one of the reactants must have run out 
early and we've only produced half as much gas. So maybe there was only five grams of chalk and that was the limiting reactant. Maybe there was uh, only 50 milliliters of the acid. Before everything was balanced just right, there was no excess, there was no limiting, but now one's going to run out first. And instead of one molar sulfuric acid, maybe we could have uh, well, half molar sulfuric acid. Again, that's only going to make half as much carbon dioxide by the time we're finished. So let's end with a quantitative one. What a wonderful journey we've been on. So the change in concentration of H plus uh, over time gives that sort of graph there for my reaction. So what's the rate at time is 20 seconds. So rate is changing concentration of a reactant or product over change in time. So we're going to draw that gradient out, make sure it just hits the line at 20 there. So it's rise over run, and the rise, it goes from 0.2 to 0.6, so the rise is 0.4. And the time, well, it goes from 2.5 to 25. Now the bigger the triangle you draw, the more accurate your answer will be. So 22.5 is the difference. Let me just write it out a bit more formally. So rate is a change in acid concentration over change in time. 0.6 minus 0.2 and 25 minus 2.5. Ignoring all sig fig conventions. Oof. The ID seems to care less and less about that. And so to work out the unit, it's molar per second. And we're done.